But those situations happen so closely, um, you know, and I don't know the timeline of that at this juncture right now. Okay, and now I know you're working on that. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, the situation just continuing to unfold. So the suspect may or may not have been a murder suspect in something completely unrelated, but we do know that shortly before this mass shooting at the elementary school happened, he is accused of shooting and killing his grandmother, then fleeing that scene. So, Allie, I know that you arrived shortly after this tragedy occurred at around 1130 local time there. Kind of walk us through what you saw when you arrived on scene. Right when I arrived on scene, there was obviously caution tape set out, but it was not uh, really, really far away from the scene, so I was actually able to get very close, and there were several different agencies that had responded. We saw Border Patrol, DPS is down here, local municipal um, law enforcement agencies are down here, the sheriff, uh, but they also had several helicopters on scene, but right when, you, right when I arrived on scene, there was a truck crash with the wheels basically bent off on this, like, kind of bowed out on the side. And you could tell that that was where the vehicle had stopped and crashed after that pursuit. And, you you know, you could get very, very closely to everything. But some of the DPS officers, the troopers that I was talking to, they actually had blood on their clothing that they were inside that building responding and, and working with these, these people that were hurt and, and some that, of course, we now learn so have lost good. their lives. And such a chaotic scene. We know that there was a staging area away from the scene. We're taking a look at some of those those faces of I'm just absolute that. grief. Again, we know that this is every parent's worst nightmare. You send your kids to school to learn, think that they're going to be safe. Um, Allie, I know that, again, there was a staging area away from the scene. But, of course, I think people's natural reaction when something like this happens, they want to come to the school. They want to come to the scene of the crime. And you had a chance uh, to speak to some of those family members, some of those those residents in the neighborhood. Yes, I did, actually. And one of the, there was another woman that actually just arrived not long after I had spoken with you guys um, in the last hour, and they actually were looking for their niece and nephew. They still hadn't heard what was going on with them. So, you know, we're talking about all these families have been reunited, but this woman just 10 minutes ago told me that she didn't know if her niece and nephew were safe. They couldn't locate them. They didn't know if they had been flown to San Antonio. They didn't know if they were at the Memorial Hospital. They, they couldn't locate them. So there are still a lot of distraught families out there, it appears, that don't know what's going on. But there was a woman who was running from the scene, and I stopped her. I said, ma'am, is your child okay? And she said, I don't know, but it's not my child. And she was on speakerphone with someone else. So this woman, I'm making the assumption that she lived nearby and was kind of checking on, on the situation for her mom, or for a friend, rather. But I will tell you this. One of, the, one of my sources is a Border Patrol agent who has a child that goes to that school, a, a, a third-grade little boy, and the mom has been reunited with him. But I know I'm going out to their house to, to kind of talk with her a little bit, and it's 36 minutes away. These families aren't nearby. This isn't like these small you know, cities that we know, that we're aware of, you know, the regular norm. These are these people travel pretty far for school. So this mom lives almost 40 minutes away to get here and respond to what was happening to her children. They didn't know if their child was safe for hours. The Border Patrol agent was telling me he did not know if his son was alive. Absolutely terrifying. And, Allie, you mentioned a source there, the Border Patrol agent who was a source. Talk about uh, some of the information that he has given you so far. Well, I have, you know, received the timeline, basically, of, of what's going on. I have seen, and that's what I've been able to really share with you guys, of when this started and when they were oh. responding. And even Where are they at? Oh, Where are they at? Awards Gala. An unfortunate beginning to the gala there, but definitely something that needs to be touched upon uh, by the vice president. We also have our reporters out on the ground speaking with people in the community of Uvalde as we have been in full coverage wall to wall. And the situation still very, very rare for the small community just 85 miles west of San Antonio. Today's shooting the deadliest school shooting in Texas history coming four years after 10 were fatally shot at Santa Fe High School. And as we've been mentioning, reaction just pouring in 
from lawmakers, both at the local, state, and national level. Governor Greg Abbott releasing a statement saying Texans across the state are grieving for the victims of this senseless crime and for the community of Uvalde. He says, Cecilia and I mourn this horrific loss and we urge all Texans to come together to show our unwavering support to all who were suffering. We thank the courageous first responders who worked to finally secure Robb Elementary School. I've instructed the Texas Department of Public Safety and the Texas Rangers to work with local law enforcement to fully investigate the crime. The Texas Division of Emergency Management is charged with providing local officials all resources necessary to respond to this tragedy as the state of Texas works to ensure the community has what it needs to heal. And a lot of healing to be done in the Uvalde community as there's now at least 15 less people who will be living there. One teacher and 14 children from Robb Elementary School. Many of you who are tuning in and uh, maybe have not been following this story all day, a gunman opening fire at Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas, killing these students. There's still uh, not a lot of information, not a lot of details yes. as to how this, on, how this all unfolded, why he was there. He was a local high school student at Uvalde High School, that shooter. He was eventually shot and killed as well. So the official count is 16 people dead in Uvalde, Texas because of this incident today. Many of these victims uh, of the shooting being transported to the local hospital, some having to be transported to other hospitals.